on a podcast called uh, Dub Jelly Sim Podcast. First ever type 1 diabetic in UFC history. Uh, doing fine, Dub. Nice to be with you. Get out! <laughs> like, yeah. My tunnel vision and my periphery, I'm like all field. Hey, you know how it is, Dub. Hey, when you're, hey, when you're team. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's crazy. What's up, everyone? We're back with another episode of Dub Jelson Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Mr. Kyle Mangus. Kyle, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well and uh, happy to be on here. Thanks for asking me. Hey, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know you, things have been kind of hectic um, just with your training and the recent announcement that you'll be playing with the Minimaki for the 2021 TBT. So how did that all come together? Yeah, I to be honest, I was kind of surprised about it. Um, but, you know, after my college season was over at Indiana Wesleyan, my last year there, um, a couple couple weeks, uh, you know, after our last game, the GM Ryan K, um, he just DM me on Instagram from the Men of Mackey account, um, and just kind of was seeing what interest I had, and I was like, heck yeah, like I would, I'd love to be a part of it any any way possible. Um, you know, it's it's a really cool tournament. I watch it every year, and it's it's fun to see the guys like the older guys who you watched in college, and now they're playing in it again, and that that type of thing. So, I mean. I was really honored that he would even think of me and, and ask me, ask me to be on the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like super familiar with it. Like I, I do watch it every year, but I'm not kind of hit. Yeah. I don't watch it like every single game, like the NCAA sure. tournament, for example, but I mean, yeah. I, I, I absolutely love it with all the guys coming back. Like, I mean, Lou Jack, Kelsey Barlow, Ryan Smith is a coach. It's kind of crazy. Um, but that's what I was going to ask you. Is it something you had even thought about? Um, not really. No, especially because I feel like you don't see guys right out of college playing in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I mean, it, it had never even crossed my mind. And then they followed me on Instagram and I was like, well, that's kind of funny. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll reach out or something like that. Um, but like you speak of like Lou Jack, I got to train with him, um, for a couple of weeks actually down in Marion, Indiana. Um, so it's nice that I already know him and a lot of the guys, I mean, I remember watching them play at, I mean, Haas and, and guys like that. So it'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, growing up from Indiana, were you an IU guy or a Purdue guy or were you somewhere else? <laughs> um, Purdue fans might not like hearing this, but I'm, I'm from an IU family. So, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I've, I've been to games at, at both places and, you know, it's awesome. And like, I'll say I have so much respect for Purdue and, and like, I love watching Painter's teams and like the way he runs their offenses and, I think it's it's really fun to watch. I mean, um, I'm a big basketball guy, so I, I think you have to appreciate that and, like, what Purdue does year in and year out. And, I mean, they're just successful each year, it seems like. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, fair enough. You're not one of those IU fans that just trashes. Yeah, you know, yeah. At all, at all costs. Like, I mean, I give IU respect when it's – when they deserve it. I mean, recently they kind of haven't, but – yeah. Uh, what's it going to be like for you to play with some of these a high, high level Big Ten guys? Like you mentioned, Haas, um, AJ Hammonds is on there too. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be awesome for me. I mean, it's definitely going to be, you know, a level that I probably haven't seen. I mean, I, I played in the NAI for four years. So, I mean, some are familiar with that because it's pretty big in Indiana, but some probably aren't. Um, so it's, that's really good basketball there, but I mean, just as far as the athleticism, the length, um, even some of the skill, like that's going to be, that's going to be, you know, a, a step up. So, um, it's going to be good to not only go against those guys, but to, you know, have them on my team and, and that type of thing. So, I mean, it, it'll be a little eye opening for me. Cause it's, I mean, it, it really is the best professional players in the world besides NBA guys, of course. So you get guys from all over played in played in the NBA, played overseas, and, um, yeah, it would be really good competition. Mm -hmm. And how much will you try to pick their brains and try to pick up little tips and tricks on the court? Oh, I mean, I'm sure I'll be doing that every day. I'll be, you know, the coaching staff, uh, Ryan Smith, I'm excited to play under him. And But, I mean, all those guys, like I said, have played in the G League, in the NBA, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to them as much as I can, learn as much as I can because they all have something they can share with me. So that'll be that'll be a really, really cool part, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned Lou Jack. What was it like to train with him? And 
Um, how's he looking? Because he's been out of basketball for a few years now. Yeah, um, he's a little bit older than me, um, but he's, I mean, he looked good. Like, I was really impressed with his athleticism, actually, like how well he moves his feet, how quick he is. Um, and he actually came to, he actually came to a couple of practices um, at Iowa when we were prepping for our national tournament. So like he was on the opposite team, um, their point guard. And I mean, his, his vision coming off ball screens was, it was, it was unreal. So, um, you know, I think he can be a big impact for the team and he looked good. I thought, I mean, I had never played with him before. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's cool. He's a bucket. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's any miss real missing piece on this team? Like, I think you guys are absolutely loaded and I know there's probably what one or two more guys that you guys are going to bring on um, here in the next yeah. week or so. Honestly, like looking up and down at the roster, I think it's, I think it's pretty balanced. I mean, you obviously have bigs and like massive bigs at that. Um, you have guys, I mean, shooters and, and scores at the wing positions. And then, I mean, you have point guards too, who can defend and, and get those guys the ball. So, I mean, to me, like I said, I haven't played with any of these guys before, but to me, it looks like a really good roster that's balanced and, you know, has what you need offensive and defensive end. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. I have to agree. How mm -hmm. does it feel to get this opportunity though, after, like you mentioned, playing at an AI level um, mm -hmm. for four years and then kind of, I mean, you're going to be on ESPN, you're going to get a big spotlight. So what does that mean to you to get that opportunity? Yeah. I mean, it, it means everything. And, um, you know, people from Iowa are so excited about it because we don't get that national spotlight. Um, you know, it's a really good program at Iowa and we've had so much success, but it's just, it's not on that, you know, national spotlight that a lot of these, you know, huge D1 teams have. So, you know, that's, that's really exciting that, you know, they can kind of be a part of it a little bit and, um, you know, hopefully bring some attention to NAIA schools and, you know, the Crossroads League in Indiana is, it's awesome. And I would encourage anyone, you know, to go out and watch a game. There's so many good teams, Iowa, Bethel, St. Francis, Marion. Um, it's all really cool because it's right in Northern Indiana and you're all just, you know, battling twice a week against each other. It's, it's all guys you played against, you know, in high school. So um, it's really competitive and, um, you know, to be from the NAI and, and play in the TBT, not many people have done that. So it, it's pretty cool. So hopefully can give the NAI some more attention there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, most definitely. Like, I mean, I know a lot of guys from Marion. I mean, like, like Hawk, he's playing for that Kokomo Bobcats team, West Towers. I mean, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it really speaks to the level of basketball in Indiana. Like, I mean, you know that better than anybody, though. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's crazy now, like, in the Crossroads League, we get D1 transfers every year. Like, um, in my time at IWU alone, we had guys transfer from Kansas, like the Kansas University, Toledo, Jacksonville, uh, Bradley, like, the list just goes on and, and that's just IWU. So, um, you know, that, that the talent level at the NAI is, is rising for sure. Mm -hmm. Who's the one that transferred from Kansas? I don't remember. His name's Evan Maxwell. So he's, he's a couple years older than me. He's been playing pro for a few years, but he, he started at Liberty and was killing it there and transferred to Kansas and then got injured and, and just wasn't loving his time there and was looking for something new and, came to Iowa to finish out his last two years and he loved it at Iowa and we won a national championship together. So mm -hmm. I want to talk about your college career, but first I want to talk about um, kind of where you're going as far as your pro career. Obviously this is a huge yeah. spotlight for you. Um, so mm -hmm. what are some of the options that you've kind of been looking at or thinking about um, for next season? Yeah, it's, it's been kind of a, a whirlwind since season has ended. Um, you know, just, just what to do. Cause I even considered the fifth year option a little bit um, just because, you know, that, that was given to us. And mm -hmm. so I thought about that a little bit, but um, decided to cross that out. So I signed with an agency um, Potter sports group. They're actually out of Fort Wayne. And that's, that's where I am right now training um, just with the other guys who've signed there. And, and I've loved it. Um, you know, just getting better, getting better every day. So um, professional opportunities. We'll, we'll kind of see what happens. That's all kind of starting right now. Um, but you know, you just never know where you might end up, whether it's G league or overseas or that type of thing. And 
Um, I feel like my agent has a lot of connections and, mm-hmm. and is a great guy. He's actually the founder of, of the Mad Ants, the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. So um, he's a really good dude. His name's Jeff Potter. So I feel like I'm in good hands there. Mm-hmm. Well, shout out to him. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you think it'll be difficult? Um, I know, like, like you just mentioned, um, your agent has a lot of connections. Do you think it'll be more difficult to get that first opportunity just because, like you said, you haven't had that kind of national attention? Oh, yeah, I think it will. I mean, that's probably, I mean, like when you're, when you're evaluating someone, um, it probably, uh, um, you know, you're from the NAI and not a, and not a big division one school, but, you know, I feel like if I get that chance on the court, I, I can play with a lot of these guys. And, um, you know, I feel like I'll be able to get some opportunities to, to do that. So I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, talking about that, like fifth year option that you could have taken, did mm-hmm. you ever consider transferring from from Iwu to a bigger school like a D1 mm-hmm. school? Yeah, I never did in my time in my time there, the four years at Iwu. I mean, I I just loved it. The the school, the people, the basketball program. So that thought never even crossed my mind until this this they, I mean, the NAI and the NCA both said, yeah, guys can have a free year to transfer over that. Then I was like, okay, I mean, um, kind of crossed my mind because I felt like my my kind of book was closed to IWU and I was ready for something new, whether that was professional or, or looking somewhere else. But during my undergrad four years there, I mean, I loved it and I never once thought about transferring, so. Mm-hmm. And then going forward mm-hmm. is the uh, is ultimate goal of the NBA. I mean, you look at guys like specific, like right now, Duncan Robinson came yeah. from D3 school, I believe, and now he's starting for the Heat, went to the NBA Finals. So do you kind of like look at him and be like, okay, I can, I can do this. This is possible. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that, w- that would be the ultimate goal. And like, it would be great if I could get some opportunities to kind of prove myself there. And um, I think what's cool now is you see guys that take all these different routes to get to the ultimate NBA. Duncan Robinson started at Division Three. Um, you know, some guys go overseas first and then get there. Like some guys obviously just like get drafted and, and they're, and they're right there. But um, I think it's pretty cool that there's so many different routes and everyone has their own kind of story um, to get there with, I mean, all the options to play basketball now. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I can, I can get that chance and um, that type of thing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, along with playing for Minimac, I know you've been training, uh, what has your off-season program been looking like since your guys' season ended at Iowa? Yeah, um, so I've been I've been getting after it. A big thing for me, I've got to build my frame a little bit more. Um, I'm, I'm about 205, so I need to get to 210, 215. Um, but uh, I was actually in, in, in Greenwood, Indiana, just south of Indy um, for May, training with a guy named Johnny Marlin. Um, he actually played for IU, but he played for IWU as well. So I know him super well um, and was down there for May, then came straight up here to Fort Wayne for June and we'll be here all June into July. Um, so just working out twice a day, getting a lift in each day and and playing open runs with uh, these other guys in my agency, which is good just because, I mean, they're they're really high level guys. So, yeah, it's been good. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have a ton of options to train at as well. Like, yeah, you know, a big, a big one is Taylor Ware. Yeah, Taylor Ware and Carmel, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, Johnny and uh, the Delks. Um, how nice is it to have so many great places with so many basketball minds that you can go to and improve your game at? Yeah, it's it's awesome, especially in Indiana. Um, you know, these guys are so smart basketball wise, but they really care about you as people too and, and want to see you do well and, and help you. So um, yeah, I got to meet Taylor too and he's an awesome guy and um, love watching what he does down there. But yeah, it's it's awesome here in Indiana because I mean, you don't just have to be, you know, bound at one place, but you can kind of go all over the state and 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 do training different places. It's, it's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a basketball culture here. Like, like yeah. we're, we're world famous for, um, at yeah. this point. Yeah. So what going forward, what areas do you think you need to improve on, um, to make that jump at, to the next level aside from like you mentioned your frame? Yeah. Um, strength is probably the biggest one in quickness, but I mean, just 
consistency shooting to where you have to be like an absolute dead eye because I mean that NBA line I've been practicing at it. It is it is far back there. Um, so just just getting I mean more consistent back there and being able to shoot you know on the move off the dribble and just knock down shots shot and like when you miss one you'd like like just being able to you know hit them at a high clip no matter what um, you know that's that's going to be big because it's harder to get in the paint um, and it's harder to finish in the paint when you have you know seven footers and stuff is um I, I will i my game i actually spent most of the time my time in the paint but the guards are a lot smaller at i woo i was able to use my length right over them um so you know that's that's probably the biggest thing i would say and then just operating out of, out of pick and roll that's what the game's kind of going to um you know when you're a guy who can you know not only score but pass and dribble and operate off that 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 can really help you too Mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to go next to your your time at Illinois or uh, Indiana Wesleyan sorry um, okay. I have a friend that goes to Illinois Wesleyan so I'm <laughs> okay yeah. it's a habit uh to say that um but what was the recruiting process for you like obviously you're kind of under recruited in terms of the yeah. ones and things of that nature um so what was that process like and how did you end up at Iowa yeah I was I was very under recruited um you know I I had a lot of small college um, teams that were interested in me and offers there, but um, I didn't have one division offer or anything like that. I was an Indian all-star my junior and senior year. So that was, that was really cool and special. And, um, you know, being from Indiana, that's every kid's dream. So that, I mean, that was awesome. But as far as, as recruiting goes, um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't looked at by many, you know, any like big schools, power five schools at all or anything like that, but just like smaller division one schools, mid-major. But I mean, I loved IWU from the very beginning. Um, they actually started recruiting me when I was a freshman, a freshman in high school um, and just developed a connection with their coaches and players. And I, I just knew it was the right fit all along. So I committed pretty early um, right after my junior year of high school. And, um, you know, I felt, I felt great about it. And, obviously you have no regrets about it. Mm -hmm. And what was that, what was that connection? Like what, like, what was that moment when you knew like I was going to be my home for the next four years? Um, you know, going on visits was one thing, but actually going to, I think a game at IWU for the first time probably did it for me. Just watching how the players play. I mean, it's probably, the fastest offense and like most high scoring offense, like in the past 10 years of any college basketball team in the, we scored over 90 points every season. And I mean, it's just up tempo, but it's guys who really, you know, share the basketball and want to see their teammates do well. Um, the coaches really, I mean, pour into you and, and uh, I mean, just their philosophies are, are awesome. So, I mean, I knew it, it would be a great place to play basketball and, I could grow in my character and on the court and that type of thing. I was like, yeah, I mean, this is where I want to be. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And go, kind of going back to that, you being a Indiana all-star, your junior and senior years, mm -hmm. uh, who else was in your class? Yeah. So a big one, Sasha, um, I actually played against him in high school a couple of times and um, I always enjoyed that. We had some good battles. Um, he's a good guy, but we had uh, like Jaron Jackson, um, Chris Wilkes went to UCLA, uh, Jack Nunji, who was at Ohio, or, or not Ohio, Iowa, um, Malik Williams, Louisville, um, Jermaine Cousnard, uh, he's up kind of in, in, in the Northwest, but he, he went to South Carolina. So it was really Paul Scruggs, guys like that. I mean, we had a ton of talent. Um, so that was fun to be a part of um, for my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. What was it like to see someone like Jaron Jackson for one year at Michigan state. And then yeah. now he's, he's going to make what a hundred million dollars probably. And yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Cause I remember the first time I walked in the gym for all for Indian all-stars my junior year. And obviously like, you know, who the guy is, but I, I hadn't like seen him in person before. Um, I went to like shake his hand and like, I just remember his hands were the biggest like hands I've ever seen. And I was like, Sheesh. And then he starts just dunking everything around the rim with his left hand. He's a right-hander. I'm like, that's kind of interesting. 
Um, and then, and then he goes out and starts shooting threes and, and is making, I'm like, yeah, this guy's going to be in the NBA one day. But I mean, I don't like, that was before he kind of blew up, I guess you could, could say like he was high, highly rated, obviously. Um, but then, I mean, his skill took off from there and obviously did well in Michigan state defensive player of the year and that type of thing as a freshman. So yeah, kind of a no brainer if you're an NBA GM to take him. I mean, I went to the junior senior all-star game well, last Wednesday or Thursday. And yeah. I mean, just across the board, Indian All-Stars are just straight dogs. No matter where yeah. they're going, uh, I believe his name is Luke Brown. I mean, he's going oh, to, yeah. going to yeah, Stetson, he's going to and mm-hmm. he's a beast. Yeah. I yeah. I actually watched him quite a bit in high school. Um, he In his early years, freshman, sophomore, he would come to IWU and, and play with us and stuff. And I got to know, to know him a little bit. So I, we would go watch him a couple times a year. And yeah, he's, I mean, he can shoot from way out, but his skill is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So. And when you, like, when you get that call, like you mentioned, it's a dream come true for yeah. a kid growing up in Indiana. When you get that call and you, you hear the news, news that you're an Indiana all-star, what is, what is going through your mind? Um, I mean, just excitement and, for me, it was honestly, like, it was kind of unbelief for a moment because I didn't – I was, like, one of those border guys. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be on this team with, with especially how loaded, like, the class of Indiana, I mean, is this year. I was like, I'm not sure. I mean, so, I mean, I really wanted to make it, obviously, but, um, you know, you, you just feel honored. And, like, I'll, I'll never forget um, that day when it was, like, released, came home from school – and my grandpa, my grandparents live in our neighborhood. So I stopped in my grandparents' driveway and, and he, and I got out the car and he started crying. I was like, man, like this means so much to people, like, especially here in Indiana and that type of thing. So, um, it was, a, it was a special few weeks just to be a part of that. Mm, that's, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, um, it's powerful for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so going back to your career, I will, um, how are you going to look back on that? I mean, obviously it's over now. So, but in the, in the future, how are you going to look back at such a legendary career? Um, yeah, it's, it, it probably, ha- it, it hasn't set in yet. I mean, just, just, I mean, finishing up there and, and that type of thing. And, um, but I would say, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of points and, and records and achievements and, and championships and that type of thing. But, I mean, I just really loved the people at IWU, and I'll never forget the people. Uh, you know, it's people that really care about you and want to see you do well and, you know, will push you and challenge you and, and hold you accountable. Um, you know, a lot of these different places, like players can go there and, and be seen as part of a business um, and, and only be appreciated if they're producing, you know, for that coach or for that school. Um, and that can be really hard, but I mean, I feel like it's, I feel like it's different at, at IWU. Um, you know, it's, it's really a, a brotherhood and, and that type of thing. And, you know, I'll always remember the people the most out of anything and, and just, you know, what they did for me and how I, I was able to connect with guys and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I find that to be true with smaller schools. Um, just, I mean, from the outside looking in, obviously you, you would know a lot better than I would. Um, do you have any advice for, a kid that's coming into a D3 NAI school uh, to play basketball? Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, you're you're in a great spot. There's probably people out there, your friends or whoever that were just in your ear saying, oh, if you don't go D1, like, you, you won't amount to anything or, or things like that. Or maybe you have those thoughts in your own head because, because of things like social media nowadays and, um, you know, just the guys who are getting, you know, the highlight films and, and that type of thing thing but I mean I can say I can say you you can go to a d3 school or NAI school and you know absolutely love it and and be thriving you know basketball wise and and play you know play basketball at a really high level and and just really enjoy your time um and and some of these guys go to these big power five schools and their times that their time there is just miserable like obviously it's not for a lot I mean a lot of guys go there and and they love it but for some it's just absolutely miserable um so, I mean, I would say, like, it's not about, you know, all just going D1, but it's about going, you know, where the right fit is for you as far as, you know, 
basketball and academics and and just like relationships and that type of thing mm -hmm. and that that fit with all those things that you mentioned do you think that's why you had so much success there yeah for sure like i i just clicked with the players and and the staff and honestly a small college was probably better for me um it's kind of interesting. My brother's two years older than me and he went to IU. Um, and he, I mean, he loved it there, like the big campus feel and that type of thing. Like that was all for him, but I'm not sure if that would have been for me. So I, I mean, I think our paths both, they, it, it, it worked out for us fine, but um, it's just interesting to see like how that's different for some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. Yeah. Um, and what was it like to, uh, like you mentioned, the national championship and your two-time <laughs> NAI National Player of the Year. Um, how much does that those things mean to you, especially the championship? Um, you know, it means a lot, and it doesn't mean a lot for me individually, but it, it means a lot, you know, for IWU and for the school because we're so passionate about it. Um, but I mean, the NA, NAI National Championship was awesome. That was my freshman year. Um, and it was actually in Sioux Falls, South Dakota at this really cool arena. It's where the Sioux Falls Sky Force G League team plays. Mm -hmm. um, one of the coolest arenas I think I've ever seen. Um, but it's kind, of, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but um, it's, a, it's a cool place. But just winning that, coming in your first year and winning a national championship, you're like, wow, like you just get thrown right into things. And, um, you know, you're playing in one point, two point final four games and that type of thing. Um, so that, you know, that was, that was really cool. And then just from there, um, you know, to win four Crossroads League championships and, and three Crossroads League tournament championships, um, you know, that, that was pretty cool just because of how, how competitive it is. Um, like I mentioned, so, um, I would say, I would say just like the championship parts and, and, and winning, I mean, that's something I'll remember too. Mm. I mean, those other Crossroads League coaches, they're probably glad that you're out of there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, I slightly thought about staying for a fifth year, so they probably thought I would, I'd be that old dude who just never would leave the place, but um, I crossed it off quickly. <laughs> hey, I mean, it'd be like Grant. Um, I mean, I talked to Grant Weatherford the other day. He's playing his, he's about to play his seventh year. Call it wow. Okay. I played, with his, I played with his brother in AAU. <laughs> so. Sterling. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, last question I have for you, uh, do you have a game or a moment? Maybe, I mean, it could be off the court too. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that is most memorable to you that you'll never forget. Um, it'd be easy to say the national championship game, but I'll say, um, my freshman year, we were playing St. Right after Christmas, we were just coming off actually a three game losing streak, which is the most that I had during my time there. Um, and they were ranked number two in the nation. We were probably like eight or, or something like that. And um, I had a 40 point game at home and we won in double overtime. Um, and like the place I was just crap, like people, there weren't even enough seats for everybody. Like they were just on the sides and the corners kind of filling in. Um, so I felt like that was kind of my like, like welcome to college basketball moment, like um, had a high scoring game. We, we had an upset against the number two team, you know, a league team. Um, so that was just like, man, like I'm really in it. Like this is college basketball. This is what it's all about. Like in the heart of Indiana. Um, and I'll never forget just the energy and, and, and uh, passion of that game. You could say. So. Mm -hmm. And I just now thought of this. Uh, do you think that you liked it so much being at Iowa just because it kind of has that Indiana high school basketball feel like just mm -hmm. super intense. Um, the fans are super passionate and it's not like such a yeah. big thing. Like if you go play for the Pacers or like IU or one of those schools. Yeah. The, I mean, the community of Iowa is so tight knit and there's like, I mean, there's diehard fans, like people that drive in from an hour to I mean, they, and they have no relationship with anyone on the team. Like it's not like a family member or anything like that, but I mean, they're, they're just at every game. There's, there's people like that who like, they just won't miss a game um, because they just enjoy watching IWU and the culture of the team um, and that type of thing. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of does remind you of high school when those gyms are just sold out and people are just, I mean, they're just going crazy for you because um, 
I don't know. They kind of feel like that's like that's their team and and they're a part of it. Whereas the Pacers, yeah, it's kind of hard to to feel that way. So, mm. well, hey man, I'm gonna let you go, but thank you so much for coming on. It was super fun. Um, I was super excited when I heard that you're gonna be joining Minamaki. Yeah, um, I know you're gonna show a lot of people what you have uh, to bring on the court. So, uh, good luck going forward, and uh, hopefully we'll stay in touch. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on and and just talking for for a little while. I I appreciate it and uh, can't wait for July. It's gonna be fun. We're in that black and gold is gonna feel a little different, but it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, good luck and stay safe. Yeah, thanks. You too.